Since the pandemic, more students have been choosing STEM subjects at uni, so science, technology, engineering and mathematics. We've seen a lot more scientists on our screens, so maybe it's no surprise that 59% of young people are more tempted by careers in science than they were before COVID. But when it comes to those who study or work in science, technology, engineering or mathematics, there is a huge gender gap. Only 26% of STEM graduates are women, and this number hasn't really changed over the last five years. So I never really just considered like the tech industry. I don't know why I thought, I think my first um, impression of it was like, oh, I had to be like super smart. I had to be this genius that knew some crazy mass function. So I think that kind of put me off at the beginning. Um, and then the more I explored into it, I thought, oh, I'm not really seeing many people that looks like me, so maybe it's not really for me. Not meeting anyone that looked like a queer didn't put her off breaking into the tech industry. After doing a coding bootcamp course and then a couple of apprenticeships, a queer landed her dream job with Microsoft, where she now works on projects to do with cloud computing. For a queer, a career in science doesn't have to mean a white coat, which is why she now uses her experiences to show what other possibilities exist in STEM. I basically try and share with people like um, how I got to where I am or to let people know that hey there, um, there's like other routes as well it's not just a traditional go to um, uni do a computer science degree whoever's like interested I try like help review their CV or um, I tag them in job opportunities. A queer believes one of the biggest misconceptions about working in STEM is that you need to be a genius. This, this is not to say that the role, um, STEM roles are not hard, they are, but it's not about you being a genius, it's about you having a passion, it's about you having a passion for helping people, it's about you wanting to problem solve, you being creative. If that sounds like you, then it's for you. The pandemic has highlighted the importance of jobs like medical researchers and epidemiologists. Even in the middle of economic uncertainty, it's believed STEM fields will continue to grow and offer new opportunities. But at the moment, women only make up 24% of the STEM workforce in the UK. So how can this gap be closed? What needs to change in the industry? One thing I've realised is that we're not all seeing the same opportunities. So number one, share um, opportunities that you come across, even if it's not for you. I would say number two, um, share your story. So like someone like me, one thing I've been doing is I've been trying to share that there's not only just one route into the STEM industry, there's different routes, luckily. And I'll say the third thing is to, um, for people who are in, um, like women, I think they should also like take that responsibility to work closely with like the hiring um, team to, you know, kind of ensure that they're not only just getting the typical candidates in, but people that are from a diverse background. So I'll say those three things, um, share opportunities, share your stories and work closely with people in the organisation to try and create that shift.